my name is Capri LaRocca. I'm a City Experience Manager at Minerva Schools. And I'm Hannah Newman, also a City Experience Manager here in San Francisco with Minerva Schools. And so we're here to talk to you today about empathy and design. Uh, but first, we need to tell you a little bit about what is Minerva Schools. Um, we are a super new college, uh, so new, in fact, that we just graduated our first students this past month. So we are super new. We're, yeah. Congratulations to that. One of our graduates is here in the audience. Alberto, congratulations on graduating, yes. Um, and so when we're talking with people about Minerva and they ask, okay, a new college, why, why create something new? Um, we often like to refer to this analogy that some of you might have heard before of imagining uh, an engineer from 100 years ago and taking them today to a Tesla factory where they would probably look around and be like, oh my God, what is all this stuff? There's robots, this is the future, this is crazy, I don't know what's happening, I don't even know where to start. Whereas if you were to take a professor from 100 years ago and put them into a classroom today, they'd look around, they'd be like, okay, there's this board that is, you can touch and that's new, but like for the most part, I, I know what I'm doing, I, I, can, I can make it work. And so the fact that education hasn't really drastically changed in the past 100 years and yet we're expecting education, higher education specifically, to teach people for the skills of today in the 21st century, where we have leaders making crazy decisions uh, and we have technology changing the way that we interact with the world at an exponential rate. Uh, it just seems a little silly to expect a traditional way of education to really help for today. So Minerva is an accredited four-year undergraduate degree program deliberately designed to teach students the skills needed for success in an uncertain future. Um, and so you graduate with a bachelor's degree uh, and it is, it is an accredited school. Yeah. Cool. Um, and so there's a lot that we can talk to you about. Uh, basically, imagine creating a university from scratch. What would you keep? What would you change? Um, so we can talk about each of these elements for a long time, but we're gonna focus our talk today on one element of this. Um, but to give you a, a brief overview, um, Minerva was designed uh, around the science of learning. So our curriculum is based in evidence-based uh, research into how people learn best. So surprise, surprise, there are no lectures. Uh, and classes are all small seminar style uh, with no more than 18 students in a class. Um, we also have a big commitment to accessibility. So 80% of our students are on financial aid. Um, and we're also very international. Um, another 80% of our students are from outside of the United States. Um, and so the part that we'll focus on today is the global immersion piece, um, which is our students travel to seven cities around the world over the course of their four years of college. Uh, they start here in San Francisco, uh, where uh, Hannah and I are, um, and then they travel to Seoul, South Korea, Hyderabad, India, Berlin, Buenos Aires, London, and Taipei. And so our team is the student experience team. We focus on what those students experience uh, in each of those seven cities. And we really believe that this global rotation is a super important and critical part of this new education. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of you here, you probably work on global teams or have interaction with people from all over the world. It's a skill set uh, to be able to empathize with people from other countries. You maybe even are designing for people from other countries um, that we really believe is important. Um, and there's a really great quote that one of our students said once that was an order, if you want to change the world, you first have to see the world. And uh, we actually would even challenge that to go a bit further. You don't only have to see the world, but you have to immerse yourself in the world and really experience the world and empathize with people uh, that you meet there. And so this is my brief uh, metaphor slide for a moment, referencing Shrek, yes, in terms of onions. And there are layers to this. Um, we were making this talk and thinking about how we use empathy in our, in our designs. And we realized that we're not only designing for empathy, so we want our students to travel the world and be able to empathize with people from very different cultures. But we also deeply believe in the user-centered design process and so must use empathy in our design process as well. So our little phrase that we've been like throwing around is like we're designing for empathy with empathy. Um, and so we'll tell you a bit more about how we do that today. Uh, and as we're talking about empathy, what do we mean by empathy? Um, different from sympathy, which is being able to understand what someone is experiencing, empathy is truly putting yourselves in their shoes, feeling what they feel, uh, and letting them know that they're not alone in what they're experiencing. 
And so, uh, again, as the experience team, I think so much of what we do is about building empathy. Like, we believe that the best learning is through doing and through experiencing, and that is also the greatest way to, to learn through empathy. empathy. So we'll tell you a bit more about that. So in order for us to design with empathy, we must first understand the journey that our students go on. So we invite you all in the spirit of experiential education to close your eyes for a moment. Now imagine that you've just landed at SFO after traveling 1,900 miles from Guadalajara, Mexico. You're tired and make your way to your new home on Market Street, dragging two 50-pound suitcases on BART. Not only are you thinking about your first week of school and if you're ready for classes in a language that is not your native one, but you need to move into a new city that is unfamiliar to you. Meanwhile, you're meeting your classmates from over 40 different countries around the world. All speak different languages, trying to make friends when you're failing to pronounce everyone's names. Then imagine being challenged by a completely new education system. The strategies that worked in high school, memorizing facts and circling letters in multiple choice tests, are no longer useful. Instead, you need to prepare to be an active participant of four multidisciplinary classes. Did I mention that this is your second language? So this is, you can now all open your eyes, please, thank you. This is a pretty typical student journey of a first year student at Minerva. And as you've now just imagined, it's probably pretty different from the one that you experienced. Maybe you went to your first week of school with your parents, clutching your stuffed animal, tearful goodbyes, no airplanes, no thousands of miles away. But we have designed Minerva to be intentionally difficult because we believe that this is the type of experience students need to be ready for the 21st century workforce. And Capri and I, in order to design for them, we too have lived this experience. So I got a chance to go to India last spring and visit with our second years and really get to know what it's like to be in their third city on this global rotation. And prior to coming to Minerva, I spent three years leading international experiential education programs, pretty much living out of my backpack. And this past fall, uh, I spent our full semester, a full semester with our third year students in Berlin, living in the residence hall, uh, trying to navigate the neighborhood with not knowing much German, um, and truly understanding what it means to be on this rotation and this journey that we're taking our students on. Um, I realized so much of what I had been designing for was with a US mindset, was with the understanding of, of my own experience versus truly getting out of my own comfort zone and being in a foreign context with a different language uh, only for four months. Uh, it's a very different uh, mental understanding. Um, and so we've put ourselves in the shoes of our users in this case, our students. Uh, and I think some of the biggest takeaways that we took from that uh, together were around the challenges, the deep challenges in being in a new place meeting new people, uh, and having to navigate this workload. I was uh, you know, in Berlin, but I was also working, and like that work-life balance is something that our students navigate with their coursework, um, learning to navigate, even just, we take for granted, like, yes, Muni and BART are confusing, but like, even just being a, a new person, like, to figure that out, it takes time. Like, these are these small things that actually add to the cognitive load of, of what you're trying to experience, and so we factored these in uh, as we've been designing, so. So one of the many programs that we've designed are our civic projects. And we're really excited to talk to you more about those tonight. And our civic projects are building empathy through project-based learning. And what we do in these projects is we take students and we put them into teams of fo about four, four or five students with tremendously diverse backgrounds and skill sets. And these are some of our student teams this year. And then we work with partners in the city who have challenges and we partner, we pair them together and these partners mentor our students and help guide them through a design process to help them address one of these challenges. And what our students have been able to do has been pretty tremendous. We've had students that have worked with the SFMTA to create an interactive map and a report to think about emerging technologies in the Tenderloin area. We've had students collaborate with Gensler, an architecture and design firm here in the city, 
to, and this is a mock-up of an app that they created to think about lifelong learning and the human technology interaction that can play a role in that. We've had students collaborate with Zuckerberg General Hospital to reimagine the prenatal care unit. These are just some of the variety of examples that we have. And what's really cool about this program, and this is addresses one of the pain points that Capri mentioned, one of the challenges of our student journey, is that all the while this project is scaffolded against the student's academic curriculum. So it doesn't add to their rigorous workload, but it actually complements it. And not only has this been really great for our students, but it's been pretty tremendous for our partners as well. So we just wanted to kind of showcase a few partner testimonials to give you a sense of how they've felt about this project too. So we'll let you read along here. And of course, I can stand here, Copri can explain, we can explain this program of civic projects and how great they are and how they address the challenges and pain points of our users, our students, as well as our partners, but in the spirit of empathetic design being user-centered design, we figured what better way than to actually hear this from one of our students themselves. So, if you remember when you closed your eyes and you heard about that student journey, we actually have Natalia with us tonight. Uh, so I'd like to invite her up here to share a little bit more about her civic project with you all. Hi everyone, I'm Natalia. Um, I'm sure you heard I'm from Mexico and I'd like to introduce, this is my civic project team. Um, this is Manny from Pakistan, Victor is from Ukraine and Israel, and then there's Amelia from Texas. And we got the pleasure of collaborating with New Day, an impact investment firm that actually wants to create sustainable portfolios to allow people to invest in projects that they believe in and that align with their values. And what they wanted to create was a community event where they could meaningfully engage with the community. We helped them design an ocean cleanup in Ocean Beach. Um, and then we created a tool to measure and communicate the impact of this event. And um, this project faced many challenges. The first being that coming from different cultures, we had very different working styles, but also very different ideas of what coming prepared to a meeting on time meant. <laughs> <laughs> so um, part of the, the um, I guess, resources that were super helpful in helping us throughout the process was that we actually had staggered meetings and check-ins with our civic partners where we could go in and present what we had done up to that point and they could give us feedback, which was super useful to keeping us on track. And it was also good to combine our academic coursework with um, the project as it progressed. So if I was learning a new concept in class, I could apply it in my project and then it was an example of how it could be used in a real life situation and it actually helped me back in class to understand it better. Um, the other thing I really liked personally about this civic, civic project was that I got to explore the city and go to locations and make observations of what um, actual locations looked like and what the problems they were having. So in this way, I could connect with, a, with an issue that's very important to a lot of people here in San Francisco and that's sustainability. And I got to participate in something tangible such as like cleaning the beach. Um, yeah, so that's all from me. <laughs> And Natalia even developed a really close relationship with the CEO of the company that she worked for, which was pretty tremendous to see on our end. Um, so sadly, while Natalia is traveling to Seoul for her second year at Minerva, and we will miss her greatly, um, we, it is exciting to report to all of you that we do have about 180 first years that will be joining us here in San Francisco. This is um, just an archetype of the types of projects that our students have done and will do this fall. So we'd like to invite you, um, if you or your organization or someone you know, is working on a challenge, a pressing challenge based here in SF um, to collaborate with us and host a project for our students next year. So we'd love to talk to you afterward if that is of interest to you. And so over the course of this talk, we've uh, described both what Minerva is. Uh, it's a lot to, to absorb, so we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, how we think about empathy in design, 
Um, and specifically through both the students experiencing different parts of the world in order to empathize with different global populations. Uh, we say that we graduate global citizens and that is such a core process to that happening. Um, but then also how, in back to my onion, uh, we need to uh, employ empathy in our own design process as well. Um, and I think in, in reflecting on this, found this great quote by Neil deGrasse Tyson, who I love, he's awesome, space is great, uh, that humans aren't as good as we should be in our capacity to empathize. So maybe part of our formal, formal education should be training in empathy. Imagine how different the world would be if, in fact, it was reading, writing, arithmetic, empathy. So thank you all so much for listening to our talk tonight. Uh, and yeah, it was great. Mm -hmm.